And again, thank you so much for joining us here on IDO Today. Rock suckers, vampire fish, Pacific lamprey, they do not have friendly nicknames. Uh, but these eel-like fish, get this, they can climb through a river rapid and scale rocks using their unique mouth. These strange slimy little fish play a significant role in ecology and culture, and they used to be plentiful on the tributaries of the Clearwater River. University of Idaho and the Nez Perce tribal researchers are all working together to bring this culturally significant species back to sustainable levels. Leah, help us understand, first of all, what is a lamprey? So a lamprey is a really old fish. They're um, older than dinosaurs. Wow. Yes, they have a life history that's very similar to salmon. So they go up to river to spawn and then go down river to the ocean after a period of time and then just repeat that cycle. Uh, and they are parasitic when they're in the ocean, but not in the freshwater. Once they go back to the freshwater to spawn, they actually don't eat at all. Okay, and, and what is like a signature look of a lamprey so people are they, able to identify this? Oh, um, so they look like an eel. That's actually one okay. of the colloquial terms that a lot of the tribal members use and other people who research them is, uh, they call them brother eel. So they're actually a fish okay. instead of an, being an eel, but mm -hmm. they look like an eel. And, do, and they have a sucker mouth, right? They do. They have yeah. like a, it's called an oral disc and it's okay. a sucker mouth to attach to a fish. Um, and then they have rows of teeth on the inside if they were actually going to feed. They are contribute ecologically in terms of the, when they come upstream to spawn, they add nutrients to the river when they die. The larval lamprey are actually stream cleaners. They're filter feeders when they're in the freshwater, so they kind of act as stream cleaners. And they're really fatty, so a lot of predators like to eat them, so they act as a prey buffer to other fish like salmon. So mm. they kind of balance out that predation when they're present. Okay, all right, so they have a number of key roles in yes. the ecosystem in our river streams yes. in, in particular. Um, why are the Pacific lamprey, to be very specific here, <laughs> uh, why are they important to the Nez Perce and other tribes in the Columbia River Basin? Well, so the Pacific lamprey used to be really abundant before the dams were put in, and oh. so they're actually considered a first food of the tribal, uh, the Pacific Northwest tribes, and so they're just as important as salmon to Oh, them. wow. Yeah. Okay. So they have a lot of, uh, they feed a lot, or, or they used to, uh -huh. um, and then medicinal and all religious importance. They're like, a, being a first food, they're of a huge cultural importance. We put in fish ladders for the salmon. Yes. But we yeah. have, that doesn't actually help the lamprey. So oh, really? they're not as great at swimming as fish, and um, so they have to just be trapped and transported upstream. Like in the 60s and 70s, as many as a million fish or lamprey would come to Bonneville, and now there's only like 20,000. Oh, seriously? So there's wow. numbers are way, way down. And it's something that really, it, you know, because of the importance to the ecosystem and the native tribes, they really, we have to find out ways to fix the dam problem, not just get around it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of where the conservation efforts that I'm involved with come about. And currently what they're doing is uh, something called translocating, which is where they trap them at Bonneville Dam and then they truck them all over the Pacific Northwest to the Salmon River, the Snake River, the Clearwater, all over. What's the goal of that then, of these restoration efforts? So the first goal was to actually halt the decline. Okay. Because if the fish weren't making it upstream, then they also aren't making it downstream. The numbers aren't getting up there, so they're not reproducing, and then no fish are going downstream. Yes. So they were trying to do, use translocation to get fish upstream, and they're doing that. But then also the dam are inhibiting downstream passage of the larval lamprey. So they're trying to change the way that the fish can go through the dams. Okay. The screens and things in the dams are actually catching them right now. So okay. they're trying to get like develop new ways of, or new screens and other ways of diverting them. But not much is known about the biology and the life history of lamprey. They yeah. haven't got as much attention as salmon. Yes. And so when we were talking to the tribes uh, and some of their agent, other agencies, 
they don't know how to sex the fish reliably. And so they don't know if their efforts are, if they're just transporting a bunch of males or if they're transporting males and females in equal numbers. Oh, wow. With salmon, they use a sex hormone that's very similar to what we use. Yeah. So we have commercially available assays that we can just put their plasma into and run through. And it'll tell us whether or not they're maturing. With lamprey, they're so old that they don't use that same hormone. Oh, wow. So we weren't sure if even the assay would work or how it would work. And, you know, there's been some curveballs thrown at us. And then, but that wouldn't work in the setting of their collection. It's very like, they collect them and then they need to go out the same day. So we also have to develop a method that's very um, super responsive and very accurate. And that's where the ultrasound came in. And so we're using an ultrasound to oh, look wow. at the gonads. And where can people go to learn more? There's the Pacific Lamprey Conservation Initiative. And then there's also the link at the bottom of your screen, which will take you to some information with the University of Idaho.